Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new theory and speculation video. Today, I want to talk about visions and the potential they hold. Visions are a mysterious part of the Genshin lore, and I have a few ideas of what secrets they could be hiding. Now, this video does contain spoilers for the quests listed on screen now, so if you haven't done those, you have been warned. With all that said though, let's get right into the video. To start off this video, I want to go over what exactly visions are, as well as what kind of power they allow people to control. Typically, visions allow their users to control one of Tabat's seven elements. These visions are received by those who have a strong enough ambition, though the exact requirements aren't set in stone. You don't need to be in a life or death scenario to obtain one, as Lisa got hers just by thinking about it, and Tainari got his by correcting a professor. Now, Anyone who possesses a vision is known by the gods as an allogene. These people have the potential to ascend to Celestia and become gods themselves. After overthrowing the aristocracy and founding the Knights Vivonius, Vanessa ascended to Celestia, and the Rain Slasher weapon suggests that Guhua ascended as well. At the moment, we don't know for certain if either of them had a vision, or if they ascended to Celestia because of their accomplishments. Moving back to the power of visions though, they can control more than just the elements. In Fontaine, there are different vision designs based on whether their wielders can use Numa power, Osea power, or both. Known collectively as Arc power, this power is exclusive to Fontaine characters and the Hydro Line Traveler. Still, with the appearance and power of Fontaine visions being modified to accommodate Arc power, this opens up the potential for visions to control even more types of energies. In Natlin or Snezhnaya, we could be introduced to a different type of energy that can be harnessed by visions. Additionally, visions may have the potential to harness the power of other elements beyond the seven we know. These would include the theorized light and dark elements, but I have more ideas than just those. If we look at the description for the name card Colors of the Rainbow, we learn that there could be more elements, but people could just be too lazy to count. So, elemental energy could be like a spectrum, with only seven elements, or colors of the rainbow, being clearly defined. These definitions could have been made either by the authorities of the Seven Sovereigns or the Gnosis. The granting of a certain vision may only be possible if an authority or Gnosis has enough power to give. If more authorities existed in the past, or even came to be now, new elements could break from the spectrum to be clearly defined. After all, certain gods like Guizhong or Havria don't exactly fit into one element. Their powers were similar to Geo, but a little different. I do want to make a full video on the spectrum of elements, so stay tuned for that. Now, let's talk about the origin of visions and who gives them out. Visions are granted by Celestia as a form of acknowledgement. As I said earlier, this acknowledgement is given to someone who has a powerful enough ambition. Additionally, a previously extinguished vision, known as a masterless vision, can be reignited by someone with a similar will. At the moment, it's unclear who exactly gives out the visions, but it isn't the Archons directly. It is a piece of the Archon's authority that is given, yes, but they do not know who exactly claims those pieces. An Archon's will may be part of it though, as when the Vision Hunt Decree was enacted by the Raiden Shogun, Electrovision stopped appearing. After the decree was repealed, it can be assumed that Electrovisions have once again started appearing into Vat. Interestingly, A herself was unaware of this change, which makes sense given the fact that the Archons don't know who claims the visions. Now, Celestia isn't the only one who can grant visions. After Nouvellet regains his full Hydra authority during the Fontaine Archon quests, he sets aside a part of his power for humans to claim. This isn't because he obeys Celestia or anything like that, he just acknowledges the wills of humans. As such, Hydra visions can still appear in Tavat. We see this firsthand during Farina's story quest, which took place after Nouvellet regained his authority. The vision that Farina received also allows her to control both Numa and Osea power, which does make sense, given the fact that Nouvellet gained full control over Arc power with his authority. 
Now, since Nuvolet doesn't obey Celestia, we don't know if he can control who he gives his Hydrovisions to. With the Archons, they have no clue who they go to, but this could be different for Nuvolet. He may be able to choose who he gives his power to, which could lead to some very interesting scenarios. That brings us to the main point of this video. Can someone wield two visions at once? From what we've seen, it is possible. During the climax of Inazuma's Archon quests, Kazuha reignited his friend's Electrovision to deflect an attack from the Raiden Shogun. After getting pushed back, the Electrovision went out again, leaving Kazuha with just his Animo Vision once again. So, as of right now, we don't know if someone can permanently wield two visions. It is possible temporarily, but we have no mention of it occurring permanently. However, with Nuvolet obtaining his original power, this could make it possible. If he does have some control over who he grants his visions to, he may be able to grant someone a second vision. Additionally, this could even be possible underneath the rule of Celestia. If someone has more than one powerful ambition, they could potentially receive more than one vision. Of course, this may not be possible, and if it is, it would be very hard to create a balance kit for a character around two elements. Still, this is a theory video, so let's talk about characters that could wield two visions and come up with ideas for how their kits could work. Firstly, I want to talk about the highly anticipated Grandmaster Varka. As the Grandmaster of the Knights of Avonius, he is incredibly strong, and Tartaglia even dreams of fighting with him one day. At the moment, we don't know anything about what element he could be, so why not give him two? After all, his title is the Knight of Boreas, and when we fight Boreas, he uses two elements, those being Animo and Cryo. Therefore, Varga's kit could be inspired by this weekly boss fight. Since this fight has two phases, Varga's kit could include a stance change that changes his elements. This could be built into his elemental skill, making it so that he wouldn't be too broken. His attacks could also mirror those of Andreas, with his skill sending either ice waves or wind blades towards his enemies. As for his burst, it could either be dependent on which element he is using at the time, or it could combine both to create a blizzard effect. I know my expectations are probably way too high here, but it's just a fun idea. As for the second character who could wield two visions, let's bring back Kazuha. Perhaps later in the story, we'll have to make a return to Inazuma to deal with another conflict. I do want to make a separate video on a topic like this, so I'll keep things simple for now. In this conflict, Kazuha may once again have to brave the lightning's glow, with his friend's vision igniting for him once more. However, this time it could be permanent, or at least longer than previously. Think of this as similar to the situation with Don Hung and Imbiber de Lune in Star Rail. He didn't stay in his altered form permanently, but both were still playable characters. Animo and Electro Kazuha could then be a separate character, or even a skin that we would have to pull for, even if it doesn't last in the story. For his kit, his current skill and burst could be altered to accommodate the new Electro Vision. His skill would be the same going up, but when he comes back down with a plunging attack, he could deal AoE Electro damage instead of Animo damage. For his burst, it could always swirl with Electro, and could also strike bolts of lightning that deal Electro damage further out than before. Now, for the last character today, I'd like to once again talk about Il Capitano. From the info we have, he is very likely the first of the Fatui Harbingers, meaning he is extremely powerful. As such, he could definitely possess multiple visions, or even multiple delusions. These visions or delusions may be part of what makes him so dangerous in battle. Anyways, that's pretty much it for my thoughts on visions and the potential they could hold. I definitely want to keep discussing ideas like this, including videos on the spectrum of elements and future stories in previous nations. Also, I recommend you watch my recent video on Natlin if you want more of my speculations. I would love to hear what ideas you guys have about visions and wielding two or more in the comments below as well. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.